Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to prove this fun little graph theory theorem. want to mention before I read the theorem, an immediate result of this theorem is that every non-trivial connected graph contains at least two vertices that aren't cut vertices. I already proved that result in another lesson. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And in that lesson, we prove it a different way. We don't use this result. So that's always fun. Check that out if you're interested. Once we prove this, I'll mention how it implies that other result, that every non-trivial connected graph contains at least two vertices that aren't cut vertices. But this theorem is our focus today. Uh, so let's get into it. Let U be a vertex of a connected non-trivial graph G. If V is a vertex farthest from U in G, meaning V is a vertex of greatest distance from U, then that vertex V is not a cut vertex. So deleting it doesn't disconnect the graph. This is a pretty simple proof by contradiction. Definitely, rec definitely recommend giving it a try yourself before watching the rest of the video. Let's get into it. We, of course, assume the hypothesis of the theorem that we've got a non-trivial connected graph G, and we're gonna say, let, let's just take any arbitrary vertex from G. So let U be an element of the vertex set of G. Now we also want that vertex V that is furthest away from U. So let V be a vertex of greatest distance from U. So let V be a vertex of G furthest from U, which means V is a vertex of greatest distance from U. So there might be other vertices in G just as far away from U as V is, but there are no vertices further away from U than V is. Now an important thing I want to point out here before we move on is that we know U is not equal to that vertex V furthest away from U. We know this is the case because G is non-trivial and connected. So suppose this is our vertex U. Since G is non-trivial, it must contain at least one other vertex. If U was not adjacent to any of those other vertices, the graph would be disconnected. But it's not, it's connected. So U must have at least one neighbor. So of course, at the very least, there's some vertex that has distance one from U. So the furthest vertex from U is not going to be U itself, which has distance zero from U. So we know this vertex furthest from U is distinct from U. A small detail, but kind of important. So I'll just circle that, keep that in mind as we move on to the contradiction part of the proof. We want to prove that V is not a cut vertex, that deleting V does not disconnect the graph. So we're going to suppose, for the sake of contradiction, SFC, suppose for contradiction, that V is a cut vertex, which of course means that G minus V is disconnected. Now, since U is not equal to V, we know that the vertex U is in this graph, G minus V. Since G minus V is disconnected, it must have at least two components. So one of those components contains the vertex U. Let's take a vertex W from a different component of G minus V, a component that doesn't contain U. So we'll write that now. Let W be a vertex of G minus V from a component that doesn't contain U. So let W be a vertex from a component of G minus V not containing U. So they are from distinct components of this disconnected graph. Thus, of course, W and U are disconnected in G minus V. There are no paths connecting them. However, there did exist at least one path connecting U and W in the original graph G, since G is connected. Now what we know this means is that every path connecting U and W in G must have contained V. Otherwise, if there was a UW path not containing V, that path would still exist in G minus V. And so U and W would be connected and couldn't possibly be from distinct components. But they are from distinct components, so we know that V lies on every UW path in G. Now let me write that. We'll write that in orange. V lies on every UW path in G. And this this almost gets us to our contradiction. So V lies on every UW path 
in G. An immediate consequence of this is the contradiction. This implies, this implies that the distance from U to the vertex W in the graph G, so I'll put G in the subscript, the distance from U to W in G is greater than the distance from U to V in the graph G because V lies on every UW path in G. So the distance from U to W is greater than the distance from U to V, which contradicts the defining characteristic of V, which was that it is a vertex of G furthest from U. Now, just to explain a little bit more about why this is true, suppose that we've got a UW geodisc, right? Suppose this is a UW geodisc. This is just supposed to represent a path, not a single edge. And remember, a geodisc is a shortest path connecting two vertices. So this is a shortest path connecting U and W. So the length of this path is the distance from U to W. We know that V lies on every UW path in G. So V is somewhere here. And I didn't mention this, but of course, we know that W is not the vertex V because W exists in G minus V. Now this, this part of the geodisc from U to V has to also be a UV geodisc. So the length from here to here is the shortest possible way to get from U to V. And so it's the distance between U to V. And so it's clearly shorter than the distance from U to W. So the distance from U to W is greater than the distance from U to V. And thus, since, since that's a contradiction, that contradicts our assumption that V is a vertex furthest from U, we know that G minus V must be connected because our original contradiction assumption was that G minus V is disconnected. Now, by contradiction, we know G minus V is connected, which I'll abbreviate like that, and thus, of course, V, by definition, isn't a cut vertex. V isn't a cut vertex. And so that, my friends, done squatting, that can, uh, completes the proof. U is a vertex of a connected non-trivial graph G. If V is a vertex furthest from U in G, then V is not a cut vertex. So in a non-trivial connected graph, how does this imply that the graph must have at least two vertices that aren't cut vertices? Well, let's explain that. And I'll try to go quick because my microphone is running low on battery. So hopefully we can get through this quick. So if we've got a non-trivial connected graph, right, it must have at least two vertices since it's non-trivial. So we could have a starting vertex we could call U. Then we could apply this theorem to U to get some vertex we could call V. And V, so V is a vertex of greatest distance from U. We've just shown that this vertex V must not be a cut vertex, can't be a cut vertex. Then we can apply the theorem again to the vertex V, and we're guaranteed to get a different vertex when we apply the theorem to V. And by different vertex, I mean different from V. The vertex furthest from V might be the vertex U, but it also might be some third vertex, W. Either way, whatever vertex is furthest from V, we can just, you know, we apply this theorem again, that vertex can't be a cut vertex either. And for the same reasons I mentioned at the beginning of the proof, where we said U isn't equal to V, that's why we know that when we apply the theorem to V, the vertex furthest from V can't be V itself because of course, since it's part of a non-trivial connected graph, it's adjacent to at least one other vertex. So that vertex furthest from V might be the vertex U, but it might be a different vertex. You know, try, uh, try applying it to some graphs yourself, see how it works. But that's, so that's how that implies the result. Uh, if that's not clear, uh, ask me a little bit more in the comments. Think about it a bit yourself. I think it's pretty clear though. Basically just apply the theorem twice and you're guaranteed that every non-trivial connected graph has at least two vertices that aren't cut vertices. 
Pretty cool. I need a sip of water. I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this fun little graph theory theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. Bye. Oh, man.